Hello, everyone, and welcome to Teach You Tuesday. We've got a very special guest. Uh, it's one of my very greatest friends in the whole world. She's a mom, and she's also a lawyer, and she's done a ton of research for us into a topic that we were actually asked about on a previous post. We're going to talk about the COVID-19 vaccine, and specifically, we're going to discuss if an employer can require you to get the vaccine, if you have to disclose why you got the vaccine or why not. And we're going to talk a little bit about vaccine passports and what's going on with those as far as the legalities of it. Just a brief overview for everybody to kind of understand where that's going in the world today. And I think it's important to remember that, you know, requiring vaccines is nothing really new. Schools require children to get vaccines. Some employers require their employees to get the flu vaccine. So this isn't like really a new topic. But for purposes of the COVID vaccine, it's interesting because as we sit here today, it is still only approved for emergency authorization use only. So we want to talk a little bit about, you know, if that makes that difference. So I'll turn it over to Meg to ask our first question to Emily, who's done a ton of work into this for us. Yes, thank you so much. And thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. Um, so the first question is piggybacking off of what Nick was talking about, where a lot of businesses do require not businesses, I guess schools or, you know, some require certain vaccines to for their employees to have them. But um, can they do this with the COVID vaccine? What's the status? So, well, first of all, I'm excited to be here. Thank you guys for inviting me. Um, so the status with the COVID vaccine is that generally, yes, an employer could require the COVID 19 vaccine. So employers can make policies and procedures that employees have to follow as a condition of their employment. However, as I'm sure everybody has experienced in their own life, employers still have to comply with the law. <laughs> they have to comply with federal law as well as state law. And there really is no law that says absolutely yes, you can require the vaccine or absolutely no. It's sort of piecing the different laws together to come with the conclusion that generally, yes, employers can mandate the COVID-19 vaccine. Now, Emily, let me ask you this. Say an employer does in fact decide that they're gonna require the vaccine. Are there any limits on that requirement? And are there any laws that the employer can apply to show, yes, you know, we've got the teeth to do this or any laws that the employee can rely on to um, kind of try to protect their rights if that's not something that they feel is in their best interest to do? Absolutely. Um, there are many different laws that allow people to live their life and have their freedom of expression. It's a, you, people have basic fundamental rights of privacy. So I don't have to share all my health diagnoses and all my medical conditions to anybody. I have that right to keep it private. However, this right is not absolute and it's balanced against the employer's right to know information. So the main, the main entity that sort of looks at all these different laws is called the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, also known as the EEOC. So the EEOC is, it's a federal um, commission that governs employers with the meet certain qualifications. So generally, if an employer has 15 or more employees, uh, when you're looking for at certain different laws, it may be 20 or more employees, as well as any governmental employer, so state, local, federal governments, the EEOC governs all of that. And specifically what they govern is federal laws that are meant to protect certain people. So the first one would be the American with Disabilities Act, also known as the ADA. And the ADA really is um, a, a set of federal laws that protect people that may qualify with a disability. And it protects those people from having to um, put themselves at risk because of their disability. And it also protects them from having to disclose their disability and, the, and certain information to people. So that is definitely one law that is at play when you're talking about mandatory vaccines. The other one is the Civil Rights Act of 1964. And specifically, you're looking at Title VII. And that is the... Um, that's where people can refuse the vaccine based upon religious freedom, right? So there are some 
religious beliefs. Um, and when you're looking at the Title VII, it has to be a sincerely held religious belief. It doesn't have to be organized religion or sect. Generally it is, but sometimes it's not. And you're, people have that right to practice their, the religion that they want to practice and that they sincerely hold. And an employer cannot make an employee do something that is against the, their religion, their religious beliefs, things that they hold sacred to them. So that is something when you're looking at mandatory vaccines, um, especially with COVID-19, you're also looking at that Title VII. That makes sense. So now let's say an employee qualifies to refuse the vaccine that their employer is saying is mandatory under the ADA or Title VII. So then what happens? Is there a right that the employee has besides not getting the vaccine? Is there something the employer can do? Then what? If they're in that situation where, you know, one of those laws apply to them, then what? What's next? Yeah, so that's a very interesting question because there's sort of a lot of stuff that happens next. So first of all, uh, you may have to actually prove that you have a qualifying disability if you're looking at the ADA. And interestingly enough, the ADA does not have an exhaustive list of all the disabilities that qualify. And I think that's even more interesting when you're looking at COVID-19 because the, the there's not a, you know, the, the, the vaccine is, it's new. <laughs> it hasn't been around for a while. So, um, so first of all, you have to you have to make sure that the condition is a qualifying disability. Then the employee has to notify the employer of the qualifying disability, and at that point, then the um, employer has to attempt to provide reasonable accommodations. That's sort of the buzzword. And that's what's in the statute. That's what's in the law. However, the employee does not have to specifically say, I have this medical condition, I need a reasonable accommodation. Um, so although that is the buzzword, it's not necessarily the buzzword that the employee has to say. So once the employee says I is able to prove a documented disability or they're able to prove a sincerely held religious belief that prevents them from getting the COVID-19 vaccine, then the employer has to provide a reasonable accommodation. Um, in the COVID-19 pandemic, I would say the most popular reasonable accommodation is working from home. If you can work remotely, then that's a great reasonable accommodation. The issue is some jobs you can't do remotely. So at that point, what does the employer have to do? They have to still try to figure out a way to make a reasonable accommodation. However, that's not limitless. If the employer can demonstrate that um, an accommodation would cause an undue burden or present a safety risk to people, um, then they don't have to provide the reasonable accommodation. However, when you're looking at undue burden, it has to really be more than a de minimis burden. Um, and same with the, with Title VII, it's that reasonable accommodation and it's, the, the, it's very similar in the analysis. When you're looking at the reasonable accommodation, it's very, very fact specific. So it's not like, well, this person, has this disability, so this is the accommodation. It, it's not across the board. It's very, very fact specific. Now, to follow up on that, Emily, so it, it seems like you know there's a lot there when the employer is trying to figure out like what they can and can't do, what they have to do. And it, it doesn't sound like there's any specific law that's really tailored to guiding them. It seems pretty general. So where as an employer, say I'm an employer just looking for guidance on, on that type of thing, where could I go to, to just get guided on what I should be doing, what I shouldn't be doing? Well, um, first of all, I would tell anybody, employer, employees that wants guidance, they should absolutely always consult with an attorney. Um, you know, I know that the three of us are lawyers on this, but um, this is not legal advice. This is information that I've gathered. So if you really have these questions and you think you might qualify, like you, think you may have a disability that would qualify, absolutely consult with an attorney. However, that being said, uh, the EEOC in December of 2020 put out some um, guidance for people to take a look at. And that's where most of this information that I am presenting today came from. I, I, the EEOC website is very detailed about COVID-19, all different aspects. So definitely look at the EEOC website. And then if you have more specific questions about either the ADA 
or Title VII, definitely look at look at those. Um, the EEOC has links to those laws that sort of explain them in a very easy way to follow. And so I would definitely recommend going there. And I will say it's although this is this is the status right now, um, this is a moving target. So part of the reason why employers can do this is because we're in a pandemic. <laughs> There's safety risks out there for everybody. However, as the vaccine becomes more readily available and as you know, hopefully the pandemic lessens, that direct threat may go down. So that whole reasoning behind the mandatory vaccines may disappear. Um, so definitely continually to check that EEOC website because I think it will give you more specific guidance. And additionally, a lot of state legislators are looking at laws to specifically address this. So be informed about what's going on at your state government level, as well as the federal government level. But I think each state is sort of handling this a little bit different as we've seen all across the board. So uh, check out what's going on at the state level with the legislature. Talk to, you know, and if you feel strongly, you know, always advocate one way or another, call your congressman, <laughs> call your state senator. And um, those are the things that I would recommend if you want more information or you want to get involved in helping um, make your voice heard. Yeah, no, thank you. That's really great information. Um, one more quick thing that we were asked about with the COVID vaccine is the, you know, vaccine passports that are going, you know, we're seeing in the news and people are questioning like, well, I have to have proof that I have the vaccine to go to the bar, to travel. And um, the short answer is gonna be that federal, let me take that back. Let me say this. Is it legal to have a vaccine passport? Short answer is yes, it is legal. Um, people say, well, what about HIPAA? It's, you know, my medical information. I don't have to share this. Um, HIPAA doesn't apply in this situation. We were talking about this. You know, that's really for hospitals and physicians who are going to share your information. But it also protects you from sharing, protects you from people sharing your information without your consent. So if you're in this scenario, wanting to go to a bar and the business wants a vaccine proof, you're showing the passport, you're consenting. Um, so that's an example of that. Also, think of no shirt, no shoes, no service. Now, no shirt, no suit, shoes, no mask, no service. They can do that. Private entities can regulate how they want their business run and who can, you know, come and go in, in that type of situation. So there's also no mandate at the federal level for a vaccine passport. And the White House has come out on April 6. The press secretary um, spoke to this and said that they don't support um, vaccine passports or having Americans, you know, carry credentials. So right now, vaccine passports, they are legal. If, you know, a restaurant wants to say, show me a show me your card, you know, they can do that. Um, but federally, the White House you know, is not on board with that. In Ohio, where we are, Governor DeWine has said he doesn't really think that that's necessary either. So that is the short answer for vaccine passports. And so, I mean, I think the overall conclusion of all of this is as we sit here, short answer is yes, you can be required to get a vaccine um, for the COVID-19 issue going on, but there's exceptions to that. And yes, you can be required to show a vaccine passport, especially to private business. But I'm sure, you know, as Emily mentioned, that things are a moving target. So things could very easily can and will change. I just think we wanted to quickly address, you know, the questions that are coming up that we're seeing from people in the community about what can I do, what can I not do, and I think it's very good advice to, you know, we're in Ohio, like Megan mentioned, but in your state, things might be happening differently. We know that each state is kind of addressing this a little bit differently, and also, as Emily stated so eloquently, we are lawyers. We are all licensed attorneys. None of us are employment lawyers. That should be noted, and even if we were, um, we are just sharing information about information that we have learned and gathered for you, but this is no way to be substituted as any kind of legal advice. And if you really need a lawyer to represent you about something like this, we are not your lawyer. We have not met you um, only through social media, but we're happy to chat with you and kind of give you the basic guideline of what direction to push you in to get the information that you need, just to kind of break it down in layperson terms for everybody. So that's what we're sort of hoping to do. 
we hope that this was informative. I know we had a great time um, doing this all together. It was really nice to include my good friend Emily with us tonight, um, today rather, sorry. And also um, we will see you tomorrow for Women Up Wednesday. Thanks for tuning in everybody and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.